قد أفلح المؤمنون. Alright, brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I am very happy to have worked on this with Sayyid Nasser. Now, you may ask yourself, what is this event about? Those who know what a tier list already know, especially since we've already made a Sunni scholar tier list, and if you were there and remember it, then you know what we're talking about. But for those who don't know, a tier list is basically a collection of literally anything you can think about, and it's always ranked from best to worst. So, for example, you can rank food, books, movies, characters, whatever you want. Today, we're going to rank the Shia scholars. The ranking in our case starts from S or S++, I think, all at the top, which means the absolute best all the way down to D or F. I'm not sure, but it's another letter, which, of course, like it doesn't mean the worst, but let's just say the least good as there are some who are far better than others, because let's be honest, there are some scholars here who simply cannot be compared with the remaining ones. Now, let's make this clear. In no way is this event trying to mock or ridicule our beloved scholars. Just look at it as a fun way to learn about them in general, like what books did they write, why are they in the ranks that they are, what have they done to deserve these ranks, and so on. So it's a very, very summarized achievement of what these scholars have done. Also, I'm sure there are many scholars here who are known to us only by name, and also some who like, we've never even heard of before. So this is a really nice way to learn about them. Another thing, if there's a scholar you know that we didn't include here, then it's probably because there might be some controversy regarding said scholar. And if we were to include him, then our ranking of them will be very subjective and will open room to a lot of disagreements and even more controversies. That's the reason why we only included the most famous scholars of all time, which all Shias can agree were men of great renown and hence deserving to be in this list. Maybe when we're done with this tier list, you can ask Nasser about a scholar that didn't appear here, but if you want to. Uh, but we're also not including them in the list. So our good friend here, Sayyid Nasser, of course, knows more about me. So he's the one who'll be ranking these scholars, just how he ranked the Sunni scholars before. The scholars will appear either as their names in calligraphy, or as one of the books they wrote, or simply a picture or painting of them for the more modern ones, of course. Now remember, Nasser is the one ranking these scholars according to his research and opinions. So if you do have a different opinion and would like to differ with him, then please, please do so at the end when he's done. And with that, I give the room to Nasser to start with the tier list. You can go ahead, inshallah. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم أفضل الذكر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا ونبينا وأشرف الخلق وحبيب إله العالمين أبو القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد كما شرفتنا وفضلتنا به I wanted to just point out again for anyone or for any scholar that you did not see on this tier list and you feel like they should have been on there, you can ask me about them at the end and I'll tell you where I think uh, they rank. But hopefully uh, we will have fun with this event and I will not speed through these scholars and just like put them in a ranking and go know nothing about them and stuff like that. Now I will try to give, to the best of my abilities, I will try to give the best explanation for who they were and I might also give a little bit about their lives. With that being said, Brother Lucarios did send me a list of Shi'i scholar names. And that is the scholar. Those are the scholars that we will be viewing today. Uh, they are a little bit over 30 because of technical problems or just the tier list website not wanting to be my best friend. It did not host. They were supposed to be a little over 40, just as I did with the Sunnis, but it just did not work. So, you know, we'll stick with a little bit over 30. But again, this will be a little longer than the one that we did with the Sunni scholars, Ahdahumullah, because of course these are our scholars and I will be going into more depth about who they are and what their books are and what type of importance uh, they hold to the Shia. Now, with that being said, I will go ahead and go ahead and I will stream my screen, inshallah ta'ala. All right, so here are the tiers as you can see. 
again, these are the scholars right here. If you cannot see their names, of course, I will name who these guys are and what books these are and who wrote them. And we'll talk about a little bit of importance, right? There is a reason why I picked these books especially to represent the author's name. So first, we're starting off with Al-Mawla Al-Jalil wa Shaykh Al-Thiqa wa Fakhr Al-Shia wa Mawla Al-Ummah Al-Shaykh Abu Ja'far Muhammad Ibn Ali Ibn al Hussein Ibn Musa Ibn Babawayh Al-Qumwi also known as Al-Shaykh Al-Saduq. Al-Shaykh Al-Saduq, ala Allahu maqamahu al-Sharif, easily ranks as plus. This is not, there is, there is no subject to debate or question of the, the manner that a Sheikh al Saduq, he went by his scholarly works and the, the path he took to Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah alayhim. So let's, let's talk about a Sheikh al Saduq for a little bit. A Sheikh al Saduq, Allah Maqamu al Sharif, was born in either the early 4th century or the late 3rd century. And he died 381 years after the Hijrah. So he died in the late 4th century. So Shaykh al-Saduq, his father is, they call him a saduq al-awwal, meaning the first saduq or the elder saduq. And his father, he had some type of connection to Sahib al-Zaman, salamullahi alayhi, meaning that his father, he did reside in Baghdad for some period of time. He resided in Qum for some period of time, and they are both from Qum. Ali ibn Hussein ibn Musa ibn Babawayh al-Qumwi, ala Allah maqamahu al-Sharif. He had connections to the third deputy of Sahib al-Zaman, alayhi salam, who is al-Husayn ibn Ruh, al-Nawbaghti, ala Allah maqamahu al-Sharif. Al-Shaykh al-Nawbaghti, ruwan Allah ta'ala alayh, he was of course the third deputy, and he would exchange letters with the Shia, and they would send their questions to him. And he would send them to Sahib al-Zaman alayhi salam. And through some way, Sahib al-Zaman would send letters to Al-Husayn ibn Ruh. And Al-Husayn ibn Ruh would be the one to represent the Imam. And he would read the letters out to them. Al-Husayn ibn Ruh al Nawbakhti, Rabban Allah alayhi, is, uh, is my favorite of the four deputies. But enough about him. Let's talk about why I mentioned him. Saduq Sr., we'll call him that, Saduq Sr. He didn't have any sons. And his wife, she was, she was his cousin. From his from his am from his uncle uh, on his father's side, she uh, he just couldn't have kids with her for some reason. So he told Al Hussein ibn Ruh, he said, send a letter to the Imam Salamullah alayh. And this is also, by the way, for the source for this, this is mentioned in Al Ghaybah by Sheikh Al Tusi. And uh, Sheikh Al Tusi says this is very known and mustafil among the Qummi scholars, meaning this is something that's musallam. This is a true story. Al Hussein ibn Ruh. He sends a letter to Sahib al-Zaman under request of Saduq Sr. Asking for Saduq Sr. to do dua for him so that he may have children, that he may have a son. Not a very long time after he sends the letter through al Hussein ibn Ruh to Sahib al-Zaman alayhi salam, he receives the response. And so the response, uh, it reads that the Imam salam alayhi alayhi, he told him that he will not have a son from his cousin, but he will from one of his jariyat, from one of his slave girls. And so indeed he does. And he says, your sons, they will be two faqihs. They will be two scholars of jurisprudence, of Islamic jurisprudence. And they will rise the ranks of the Shia. And they will be a, a truly an honor for the Shia. And so, lo and behold, the jariyah of Saduq Sr. is pregnant and she has two sons. She has Muhammad and al Hussein. Muhammad being a Shaykh al-Saduq, and al Hussein being his brother. They were both faqihs. They were both scholars of jurisprudence. And whenever at a young age, a Shaykh al-Saduq radiyallahu anhu wa would answer would, would answer and study with the Qummis, the Qummi scholars, such as uh, Ali ibn Ibrahim, who his son was a contemporary of a Shaykh al-Saduq, and other scholars from Qum. Whenever he would sit down with them, they would be very, very surprised at his knowledge from a young age. So, do you know how they would explain this? This was a shock. This was shocking. How is this at a, such a young age? This man who knows the masail of fiqh, the masail of haram, you know, the masail of halal, the masail of salat, psalm, everything. This man was a scholar of all fields. How does he know this? So they would say this was the man that was born through the dua of Sahib al-Zaman, salamullahi alayhi. Of course, a Sheikh al-Saduq radiyallahu anhu arba wrote over three hundred books. Alaqul al-Ruayat according to some of the narrations. Like, bro, the man was a scholar. The man was a, a ocean of knowledge. And he died 381 years after the Hijrah. Of some of his students, uh, we have a Shaykh al-Mufid, which we will get to in this list, and many others. 
So Hussein bin Ubaidullah al Ghazairi, the father of Ibn al Ghazairi, Sahib al Rijal, he also, according to some ruayat, studied under a Shaykh al Saduq. And all the Qummi scholars from the next generation basically all met a Shaykh al Saduq. They studied under him in some way. That is, a Shaykh al Saduq, he firmly lands himself the S plus spot, and it'll be hard to beat this guy. All right, next up, we have a Sharif al Radi. Okay, this is a cover of his book, Diwan of Sharif al-Radi, which is his book of poetry, and he lands himself in the eighth year. Al-Sharif al-Radi, Allah ta'ala alayhi, and his brother, Al-Sharif al-Murtada. Let me tell you a story about that. Al-Sharif al-Radi and Al-Sharif al-Murtada, their father was Naqib al-Alawiyin fi Baghdad. Okay, Naqib al-Alawiyin means the leader of the descendants of Imam Ali alayhi salam in the blessed city of Baghdad. The, the blessed city that holds... Our Imams, Imam al kadhim and Imam al Jawad, Salamullahi alayhi ma. That also happens to be the place where a Shaykh al Saduq and a Shaykh al Mufid they took their studies. And the city of Baghdad was the Hausa for the Shia for a very, very long time. It is where the four deputies resided and where they died and where they are buried. And this is where the Hausa was moved to after the, the Qummi period ended with the death of a Shaykh al Saduq. The mother of a Sharif al Radi and a Sharif al Murtaba, Allahu Maqamuhum al Sharif, she was Fatima al Hassaniya. Okay, she was a, her name was Fatima. She was a descendant of Imam al Hassan. I believe her father, her, her father's name was Nasr. And she was, of course, a descendant of Imam al Hassan al Mujtaba, Salamullahi alayhi. Of course, uh, her and her husband, they had two sons. Ibn Abi al Hadid al Mu'tazidi, in the introduction to a Sharh Nahj al Balagha, which is obviously the most prolific, the greatest book that Sharif al-Radi wrote, he says in his sharh, in his explanation of the book, which falls in 20 volumes, he, expl he explains in the introduction. He says, Sharif al-Radi, of course, was a man of great honor until he narrates a story. He says, one time, Sheikh al-Mufid, radiallahu anhu arwa, he was sleeping. He says, and I saw Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha, she came to me in my dream, and she was holding in her hands Al Hassan and Hussein. And she put them in my presence and told me to teach them. And so I was very shocked, right? Sheikh Al Mufid says. He was very shocked because how is one to teach Al Hassan and Hussein? Usually it's Al Hassan and Hussein, Salamullah alayhima. They're the ones teaching us. Sayyidah Shabab Ahlul Jannah were learning from their example. No one is teaching them an example to learn from. So Sheikh Al Mufid, he's confused. He wakes up, he is confused. Matayyar. And so, not long after that, the mother of al-Sharif al-Radi, al-Sharif al-Murtaba, Fatima al-Hassaniya, radiyallahu anha, she comes to a Shaykh al-Mufid. She comes to a Shaykh al-Mufid, she's holding in one hand the, uh, the eldest of her children, al-Sharif al-Murtaba, and in the other one, she's holding al-Sharif al-Radi, and says, here are my two children, and t I want you to teach them for me. And that is truly a karama. And so, al-Sharif means the honorable one. Al-Sharif... They would give this title to descendants of Rasulullah. A Sayyid, a Sharif, a Mawla, a Abdul Salih, مثلاً, they gave that to also other descendants of Imam al kadhim along with their grandfather, Salamullah alayhi. A Sharif al Radi, he has a few books. One of them, Khasayas al A'imma, which he did not complete, but it is still here today. Khasayas al A'imma was supposed to be a very long book about the virtues of the Imams, Salamullah alayhi. But he only covered a little bit of the life of Amir al Mu'mineen, Salamullah alayhi. His other book is a book of Ta'wil al-Tanzil, which is a book of Tafsir al-Quran, specifically about the verses of the Quran that talk about ahkam, that talk about fiqh, that talk about halal and haram. And that one is still here today. He also had a book, of course, Nahj al the peak of eloquence. And it is truly the peak of eloquence. And it is one of the most eloquent and great books of the Shia, so that even the Sunni scholars have praised it, such as Muhammad Abduh, such as the Dhabi to an extent, and, of course, Ibn Abi al-Hadid al-Mu'tazidi. Nahj al of course, if you don't know about it, uh, it is, of course, translated into English, and it is considered by some the most important Shi'i book, right? Along with the Qur'an and the four Shi'i books, Al-Kafi, Al-Istibsar, Malayadhar, Al-Faqih, and Tadib al-Ahkam, if Dhabi praised the Shi'i book, you know it's good. He praised it to an extent. He attacks the book and its author by saying, oh, there's a bunch of fabrications and marasil, but it is very eloquent and has some correct things in it that Imam Ali alayhi salam did indeed say. The book is split into three different parts. 
The first of them being the khutab of Amir al-Mu'mineen, sallamullahi alayhi, his, his sermons and speeches and sayings, his long sayings. There are over 200 of these sayings. The second part of it is his letters, the letters of Amir al-Mu'mineen, sallamullahi alayhi. And the third part is his small sayings, his advice. So Amir al-Mu'mineen, sallamullahi alayhi, he did not believe that everything in this book was his. Sharif al-Radli did not believe all of this was for Amir al-Mu'mineen. Rather, he believed that a lot of this could be considered from Amir al-Mu'mineen. And if it is, which we could say a lot of it is, then this proves that Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi, after, the, after Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he is truly the most eloquent man to walk the earth. And so because of the eloquence that is displayed in the ahadith that come from Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi, he calls the book Nahjul Balagha, the peak of eloquence. Truly, it is the peak of eloquence. And that is where Al Sharif al Radi, he lands himself, he lands himself in the A tier. Next, we have Al Ihtijaj by Al Tabrasi. This is the book Al Ihtijaj, the cover of the book. Tabrasi, his name is Ahmed ibn Adi ibn Abi Talib al Tabrasi, and he will land himself in the B tier. Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib al Tabrasi, of course, a man from uh, Tabaristan, from Persia. Not a lot is known about his life except that he lived in the 6th century, the early 6th century. His teachers were contemporary scholars of Sheikh al-Tusi, and they were the students of Sheikh al-Tusi. So he had a connection, and he narrates many ruwayat in his book Al-Ihtijaj. So the only book that I know of that, has, that we have received from Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib al-Tabrasi is Kitab al-Ihtijaj, right? which is basically a book of debates. And conversations that the Imam Sallallahu Alaihi they had with other people. And then also a little a few miscellaneous hadiths, such as the letters of Sahib al Zaman to a few people, including a Shaykh al Mufid, which we will get to. Because we do not know a lot about him, he lends himself in the B tier, but his book is very, very valuable. Someone would say, Well, Nasr, his book is on Marasid. Yes, but there are some long hadiths in that book from Salman al Farisi from Ali ibn Abi Talib, from many good ashab of Rasulullah, from the imams, salamullahi alayhim, they're very valuable hadith. And when you look at them, you know that no one can say this other than an imam. Ala sabil al-ikhtisar, for the reason of not making the book too long and to not confuse the reader, Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib al-Tabrasi, he removed the asanid from the book. Again, it is a very wonderful book. It is very valuable. And it contains some debates of Ahl bayt that you will not see in other books. Therefore, Al-Tabrasi, he lands himself in the B-tier. I wish I could go on for a little longer about him, but there's just not a lot known about his life. Next, we have Qutb al-Din al-Rawandi. His name is Sa'id ibn Hibatullah al-Rawandi. Also known as Qutb al-Din, he, he will land himself in the A-tier. He has written a few books, and the most prolific and the best of them is Al-Kharaj wa Jara'ih which is a book of the miracles of the Imam, salamullahi alayhi, and it goes through a few of their biographies. He also lived in this generation after Sheikh al-Tusi, but before the generation of the Hilli scholars. Qutb al-Din al-Rawandi, radiyallahu anh, he, is, of course, he, he died uh, in Persia, and he was buried near a Sayyidah Fatima bint Musa ibn Ja'far al-Ma'suma, salamullahi alayhi. And may Allah give you all a chance to visit her and to visit Qutb al-Din al-Rawandi's grave as well. Qutb al-Din al-Rawandi, there are some many and very interesting ahadith that he had. Because Qutb al-Din al-Rawandi was one of those scholars of when you start entering the late era, but you still have the books of the early scholars, right? For example, it is said that he had the book of Muhammad ibn al-Hasan al-Saffar. Not only Basair al-Darajat, but other ones as well. And so you'll see that he directly narrates from the book of as safar which is Basair al-Darajat, and his other books without having a chain to them because he owned a copy of the book. So Qutb al-Din al-Rawandi, of course, he influenced many scholars. Of them are Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Shahar Ashub al-Mazandarani, which we will also get to in a little bit. But of course, there's also not a lot about this man's life. But there is a lot about his teachers, his students, and his books. Some of his most important books are still with us today. And of course, that is Al-Kharaj wa Jara'ih. Next, we have Muhammad ibn Mas'ud ibn Ayyash al-Ayyashi, al-Samarqandi, sahib al-Tafsir. And he will lend himself in the high eight here. Al-Ayyashi, radwanullahi ta'ala alayhi, he was born a Sunni, believe it or not. He was born a Sunni, and then he came to our madhab. Allah guided him to the wilaya of Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala. 
So this man, he was a he was of a great importance to the point where you could say that of his, he was the most important Shi'i scholar of his time, and he wrote over three hundred books. But the only thing that he could be criticized for is that he would narrate from a lot of Vaif narrators, and he would rely on Marasib, according to Al Ayashi, not Al Ayashi, Al Afu, Al Al Najashi, Al Kufi, Sahib Al Rijal. So Al Ayashi. What what of the books that have survived are his tafsir? Now, his tafsir is not of a great authenticity because his tafsir was originally much bigger. But a man of an unknown name, we do not know his name, came to the, he saw the book and he said, I'm going to copy some of it down without its chains. And that's exactly what he did. And so he, it is the hadith tafsir without asanid from Surah Al-Fatiha all the way to Surah Al-Kahf. The first surah to the 18th surah of the Quran. Some people claim that there is a manuscript of Ayashi's complete tafsir in eight volumes that is still with us today. But Allahu al-A'la wal alam Moving on, we have Al Najashi. I believe his name, his complete name is Ahmed ibn Ali Abu Al Abbas Ahmed ibn Ali Al Najashi al Kufi. He will lend himself. I think he will lend himself above Qutb al-Din al-Rawandi, but under Sharif al-Radi and Al Ayashi. Uh, when it comes to Al-Najashi, his most prolific work, and the only one that survived was his book Al-Fihrist, which is also known as Al-Rijal. Al-Najashi, sharif he was very, very invested and very, uh, he would study a lot about his home city, Al-Kufa, the blessed city of Al-Kufa, Kufa Al-Mu'adlam. And he wrote a book about the history of Al-Kufa, he wrote the book about a family in Al-Kufa, but the most prolific of his works is his Fihrist. A Fihrist is an index of names, a biographical dictionary. He mentions the names of scholars, Shi'i scholars, and he listed their books and his Isnad back to them. And most of the time, he will list if they are thiqa, if, he, if they are trustworthy in hadith, or if they are vaif, if they are weak, uh, if they are one of the ghulat, one of the, one of the people that exaggerate about Ahlul Bayt, Salamullahi alayhim. And Najashi, his book is one of the one of the usul of ilm al-rijal, of uh, of ilm al-diraya. One would describe. And in my opinion, and after even some the opinion of some scholars, his book is the most important. His book is the most authentic. His book is the one that is to be held with great i'timat. Why is this though? Let's explain. And Najashi, why does he hold a manzila? Why does he hold a grade higher than a tusi when it comes to ilm al-rijal? Specifically, Ilm al Rijal, Ilm al Diraya, because this was Al Najashi's field. His whole life was, his whole scholarly life was to study Ilm al Rijal, wa Ilm al Diraya, wa Ilm al Riwaya. While at Tusi, he was open to make more mistakes because he was studying in all fields Al Fiqh, Al Kalam, Al Tawheed, Hadith Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah Alayhim, Usul al Fiqh, Al Rasal al Amaliya, many other uh, genres of books. Of the Shia of Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah alayhim, he studied them. While in Najashi, his specialty was Ilm al-Rijal. Busi was good at Ilm al-Rijal, don't get me wrong. But Najashi, that was his field. That was, that was his playing field. And there is a theory held by one of our contemporary scholars. May Allah bless them all. And his name is Shaykh al-Arawani. May Allah bless him and keep his blessed soul with us. May Allah pro- prolong his blessed life. al so Al-Arawani, he says in his book about Ilm al-Rijal, and I hope, and I wish everyone could read this book as well. I think it might be translated into English. But he says, he holds the theory. He says that Al-Fihrist of Al-Najashi came first. Okay, Najashi wrote his book first. And then Tusi wrote his, right? It is said that Tusi wrote his because he disagreed with some things in Najashi's book. Therefore, he wrote his own version. But again, because Al Najashi this is his field, he is to be relied upon more uh, than the uh, Shaykh Al Tusi. Now we have uh, what some people like to call the dragon. A Sayyid Al Khu'i firmly lands himself a spot in the S tier, no question about it. This man, what, what a guy, some people would say. A Sayyid Al Khu'i. One of the few scholars that I have had, uh, that I put contemporary scholars that I have put in this uh, in this tier list. Why why do I put him here? He was the master of the Hausa, 
a successor of a Sheikh al Tusi This man's books, he has at least he has over 50 volumes of just fiqh. Just fiqh. Jurisprudence of Islam, the laws of Islam, halal and haram. 50 volumes just for that. He dedicated his life to that. Oh well, oh you know, Hui only did that. No, no, no. I say no to the person who says that Hui only did this. Say the Hui. He also was the contemporary master of Ilm Rajal. This man, when it came to Ilm Rajal, I want to say that in a good way, I want to say Usar al Isnad Mitl al He squeezed the juice out of the Isnad, like how a man squeezes a lemon. Because this was, he was, but the only thing that someone could, you know, criticize him for is that he was a man that was lenient when he didn't, when he didn't need to be. And he was strict when he didn't need to be. Okay? He was lenient when he was strict. And he was strict when he was lenient sometimes. That is the only mistake that I could point out for Sayyid Al-Khu'i. So, okay, he has a 24-volume Rijal book. What else does he have? His Mu'jab Rijal Al-Hadith. Is there anything more? I say yes. Many more things. And the main Risala Amaliya today that the Hawza of Najaf uses, which is Minhaj Al-Saliheen, it was first made by his teacher, Muhsin Al-Amin. And then him. And so now, usually all the scholars of Najaf, when they write a Risala Amaliya, they name it Minhaj al-Salihin. So we have Muhsin al-Amin, Qaddasallah Ruh al-Tahira. We have, or Muhsin al-Hakim, I think. And we have uh, a Sayyid Ali al-Sistani, Allah hafla wa ta'ala umar al-Sharif, insha'Allah. And a Sayyid al-Khu'i. Sayyid al-Khu'i, he was a Sayyid al-Sistani's teacher. A Sayyid al-Khu'i, radhanullahi alayhi, he studied from a very, very young age, uh, and he got the level of ijtihad, I believe, like, before he became 20 years old, if I remember correctly. And subhanAllah, he did not uh, leave a section for himself in his book of Rijal, right? If you go to the last volume of his book about al kuna wal al-Qab, right, he lists himself and he gives a little bit about his life, right? And he was born in actually 1899. He was a, he was a, very, he was a very old man when he died. And how I wish that a Sayyid al Khu'i was still with us today, because if he was still with us today, he would be the marja that I follow, 100%. Along with some other scholars, such as uh, Sayyid Muhammad al-Shirazi, rahimahullah ta'ala. But those guys, they were, they were in another level. Therefore, a Sayyid al Khu'i, he lands himself firmly in the Asbas tier. We have al Kashi, Sahib al Rajal. I'm going to go ahead and put him in the B tier. All right. Some people might call me blasphemous for this. <laughs> but uh, Al-Kashi, he was a contemporary of Al-Ayashi and Al-Kulayni. Why do I... Some people might say like, wait, he wrote a asl of Ilm al-Rijal. He should be much higher. Well, here's the thing. So, not a lot is known about his life. And the only book that is even mentioned about him is Al-Kashi, his Rijal book. And uh, Najashi praises it, but he says there are many mistakes in that book. Okay, so a lot of the Rijali mistakes that some of our even contemporary scholars go off of uh, is from Al-Kashi. Let not one be mistaken, right? The, the contemporary scholars of Al-Kashi, such as Al-Tusi and Al-Najashi, did not always rely on his book. Because his book was not the oldest Rijal book in existence. Right? The first person who wrote a Rijal book was Ubaidullah ibn Abi Rafi', the companion of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And the Rijal books have been here, right? Sayyid al-Khu'i, Allah maqamuhu sharif he says in his Mu'jab Rijal al-Hadith that there were over 40 Rijal books written by the companions, Ashabuna, from the time of Imam al-Kadhim all the way to Zaman al-Ghaybah. From the time of Imam al-Kadhim, al-Abdul Salih, salamullahi alayhi, to the time of the minor occultation, uh, the scholars, the contemporary ashab of the imams, salam alayhim, they were writing Rijal books. Anyway, Al-Kashi, I do praise this Rijal book, but the only problem is that uh, uh, Sheikh Al-Tusi, he took this book and he removed what he wanted from it. And this is, I see a mistake by Sheikh Al-Tusi. Right? And this is one of his great Rijali mistakes. But, all in all, uh, she- uh, Sheikh Al-Kashi, he lends himself in the seat here, right? Not a lot is known about his life. Uh, this is the only book that he wrote. You know, it's... I mean, it's, the book is okay. I wouldn't really call it a book of Rajal. Uh, but this is where he lends himself. 
Like, when it comes to effect on the Shia, I don't think a lot of Rijal would be lost from the Shia uh, if Keshi's book wasn't here. Some some things would be lost, but not a lot. Our Edmur Diraya would not go to garbage if Keshi's book uh, didn't exist. But that is where and Keshi lends himself. He lends himself in the C tier. All right. Where do we end up now? We end up with our boy. His, his name is Al-Hur Al-Amili Qaddasallah Ruha Tahira. A very late scholar, a thousand years after the Hijrah. But where does he land himself? All right? This is, this is like Lubnan's Fakhr, right? Al-Hur Al-Amili, right? Whenever the Lubnanis, you ask them, right? If you go to a knowledgeable Lubnani and ask him, oh, well, you know, we're the Lubnani scholars, right? He should slap you in the face and be like, Khuya, Wasal Shia Al-Hur Al-Amili. Right? This is our Fakhr. He lands himself in the S tier. Easily. Not even, like, easily in, in the S tier 100%. 100%. Al-Hur al-Amili was a master of all fields. Al-Fiqh, al-Rijal, al-Riwaya, uh, you know, many other, usul al-Fiqh as well. Okay? And this Wasal al-Shia is uh, arguably the most important book of Fiqh. Because it gathers all the ahadith of Fiqh that he that he could find in one book. Now, if he did miss out on anything, Al Muhaddith Al Nuri, which we will get to, he wrote a book, Mustadrak Wasal Shia, where he adds all the other fiqh hadith. May Allah give you all the chance to understand and to read this blessed book, Wasal Shia. It holds a great importance. So, Wasal Shia, this is the book that the, the, the Lebanese they can hold their heads up high. And, like, yeah, our boy wrote that book. That's the guy who wrote our book, right? Le- Le- Lebanese scholar wrote that book. What you got on that, right? And truly, what do the other scholars got on that man? That that man, he did something that no one had ever seen before. Uh, Al-Hur Al-Amili, he lands himself in the S tier easily. All right, next we have Al-Alam Al-Hilli. This is his book, Minhaj Al-Karama, by the way. The book that Ibn Taymiyyah failed to uh, refute. Where does Minhaj al-Karama land itself? S plus. Easily. Sahib Minhaj al-Karama. Al-Allam al-Hilli. Radhanullahi ta'ala alayh. This is where he lands himself. Easily. Right? You know where the name Ayatullah comes from? Right? The sign of God? This comes from Al-Allam al-Hilli. Because of his, abs- his intelligence. His intelligence was like so great. That they called him Ayatullah. The sign of God. Because this man was like a God chosen person. Like Allah made this man special. Because Al Hur al Amili, like my favorite book that he's written, uh, except like Minhaj al Karam and the other ones, Al Al Fain fi Imamati Amir al Mu'mineen, is such a blessed book, right? He lists 2000s logical and hadith proof. 2000. Imagine. 2000 logical and hadith proof, an appeal to authority, proving the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib. 2000. Imagine that. And of course, Minhaj al Karama, it's where it's at. You want to see a proof for Imama in his book? Imama in general, you read Minhaj al Karama. You take Ibn Taymiyyah's book and you throw it out the window, right? The Ibn Taymiyyah had his nasr towards Amir al Mu'mineen, salamullah alayhi. You throw that out the window, right? Minhaj al Karama is where it's at. I'm, I'm actually convinced that Ibn Taymiyyah didn't read the book from back to back. Just to tell you of the great manzila of Al Alam al Hilli, right? Because, of course, the, his stories and fadl is more famous than to be mentioned. Let me just give you one of them. It is said that Al-Alam Al-Hilli, Ruhanullah Ta'ala Alayh, he was making his uh, journey to Karbala to do ziyara of Sayyid al-Shuhada, Salamullah Alayh, to Imam Al-Husayn, Alayhi Salam. He says on the way to, Ka- it's, the Ruai describes, on the way to Karbala, Al-Alam Al-Hilli, he befriended a man on the way. And so they started talking with each other, right? They became, you know, they, they accompanied each other. They became good friends, okay? And they were, they were asking each other uh, questions about fiqh, uh, about halal and haram, masail. And so it says, Al-Alam al-Hilli, he was riding on some type of dabba, right? On some creature, either a donkey, a horse, or a mule. And he had a little stick in his hand that he was guiding the, the thing he was riding with. So it says, uh, that Al-Alam Al-Hilli, a thought entered his head. He decided to ask a man. He said, do you think it's possible to see Sahib Al-Zaman alayhi salam and during the, the major ghaybah? Is it possible? He asks the other man that he befriended. And at this moment, 
العلامة الحلي he drops the stick and so the man he he bends down to pick the stick up he puts it back in his hand and he says how would it be impossible for a man to see صاحب الزمان to see the imam of the time during the major occultation during the major غيبه الغيبة الكبرى when his hand is in your hand right now think about that and so he says and then العلامة الحلي he falls on the leg of he falls on the feet of صاحب الزمان سلام الله عليه and he begins to kiss them and he says he passed out and so then العلامة الحلي woke up and then no one was there and then he made is he completed his journey to Imam al Hussein سلام الله عليه let's go ahead and move on to the next one we have a Sheikh al Mufid <laughs> where does a Sheikh al Mufid land himself a Sheikh al Mufid easily the top scholar of this list easily a Sheikh al Mufid lands higher than a Sheikh al Saduq this is where a Sheikh al Mufid Allah ta'ala alayh, he lands himself a Sheikh al Mufid Allah ta'ala alayh. like let me just tell you the words of Imam Sahib al Asr al Zaman Allah ta'ala farajahu al Sharif for a Sheikh al Mufid is enough do you know what he says about a about Sheikh al Mufid in Bihar al Anwar right it narrates some Qadi Nur Allah al Shustari we will actually we will actually land and we will talk about Qadi Nur Allah in just a little bit but a Shaykh al-Mufid right not Qadi Nur Allah narrates he says we saw on his grave the khat of Sahib al-Zaman the handwriting of Sahib al-Zaman on his grave it says لا صوت النعي بفقدك إنه على آل رسول يوما حزينه أو يوما عظيمه وإن قد غيبت في جدث الثرى فالعدل والتوحيد فيك مقيمه والقائم المهدي يفرح كل ما تليت عليك من الدروس علومه Imagine he says May the one May the giver of sad news Not give the news about your death Because that, that day The day of your death O Shaykh al-Mufid It is a great day on the Shia It says وَإِنْ قَدْ غُيِّبْتَ فِي جَدَّةِ الثَّرَى Right And if now you are going to Go into the sand Then Tawheed And the Adil is also going with you. It's being buried with you. And then he says, وَالْقَائِمُ الْمَهْدِي يُفْرَحْ كُلُّ مَا إِمَامُ الزَّمَانِ سَلَامُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ Points out his happiness over when a Shaykh al-Mufid would give his classes dur- in, uh, during his time, right? Whenever he would teach a student, صَاحِبُ الزَّمَانِ سَلَامُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ He would become happy. He would become glad. تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْكَ مِنَ الدُّرُوسِ عُلُومُ And then also the letters of صَاحِبُ الزَّمَانِ سَلَامُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ to Shaykh al- where he literally calls him, he says, You are our brother and our beloved one. And you are the way, Al Wali al Nasih, right? Al Wali al Sa'id, wa Shaykh al Mufid, right? And for anyone who wants to, you can literally just look it up and it'll pop up on edislam.org. Just look up the letters, Sahib al Zaman to Shaykh al Mufid. Like, Kafa al Shaykh al Mufid, right? A few of his books are, of course, Al Urshad, Al Muqni'a. الجمل أوائل المقالات الاعتقادات تصحيح الاعتقادات and many others and so these are of course many books of الشيخ المفيد of course I believe if you've heard, heard me talk uh, about this before I believe الشيخ المفيد is the best early Shia scholar alright next is قاضي نور الله الشستري السيد قاضي نور الله الشهيد he wrote a very large book called إحقاق الحق وإسحاق الباطل okay إحقاق الحق وإسحاق الباطل is a 20 volume book destroying anyone that goes against Tashayyar. And they killed him for it. They couldn't respond to his bill, so they killed him for it. They released a fatwa saying, he wrote this book, he's a kafir wal'iyad billah, let's kill him. And so he is one of the five shuhada, one of the five martyrs. Imagine, they couldn't respond to his work, so they killed him. Can the Mukhalifin name, name me a single one of their scholars that the Shi'is killed? Abadan, not a single one. For this, I will go ahead and place him in the A tier uh, behind. Actually, I'll place him above Qutbuddin al-Rawandi. Who's next? We have Ali ibn Ibrahim al-Qumwi, obvious S tier, uh, like not even questionable. Ali ibn Ibrahim al-Qumwi narrates most of the ahadith and Kitab al-Kafi, right? You'll see that literally in Kitab al-Kafi, most of it is Ali ibn Ibrahim. He was the master of the Shia during his time, right? Ali ibn Ibrahim al-Qumwi, his father, they also described, he said his father, he was a companion of the imams, right? He met Imam al-Jawad and he narrated from him. 
It is said that he narrated from Imam Rida. He also narrated from Imam Al Hadi. He met Imam Al Hadi and narrated from him. And his son is said to have met Imam Al Askari. There's a little bit of difference of opinion on if he met Imam Al Askari or no. But he is Jadil Al Qadr, Azim Al Shan, Rafi Al Manzila. May Allah bless him. The only, the only thing of his books that have gone to us today is his tafsir. And his tafsir, for Ma'al Asaf al Shadid, sadly has been tampered with. And someone has added narrations to his book such as the narrations of Abu al-Jarud and others. If you research into the book, Al-Dari'a by Al-Tahrani, rahimahullah, you'll see that it is easy to see what is from a Shaykh Al-Qummi, uh, Ali ibn Ibrahim Al-Qummi, radhuanullahi alayhi, and what is not. Therefore, he lands himself in the S-tier. Now, we have Muhammad ibn Ya'qub al-Kulayni, Sahib al-Kafi. Where, where is he landing himself? He's, in my opinion, he's tied with a Shaykh al-Saduq. I don't know if there's a way to, you know, put them all in one place, but yes, he is tied with the Shaykh al-Saduq, Allah ta'ala alayhi, al-Kafi, right? This man who wrote a book that you'll never see ever again. You'll never see anything like it. Let's, let's describe al-Kafi, all right? Al-Kafi took 20 years for him to write, and he also had other books, right? Such as Rasal al and he also had a Rijal book. Okay, quite early Rijad book. Sadly, it did not reach us today. Right? This is like what, this is what the biggest takeaway from the Shi'i Madhab, that so many of our books are lost, but alhamdulillah, enough was preserved to keep our Madhab alive. But Shaykh al Qudaini, of course, he was the student of Ali ibn Ibrahim. He was a teacher of Saduq's father and many others. Al Allam al Qudaini, a Shaykh al Qudaini, he was the first man to be called Thiqatul Islam, the trustworthy of Islam. Because of how trustworthy he was. And he was, of course, the master of the Shia during his time. He is not a lot is known about his life, but he is buried not far away from Imam al-Kadhim, salam alayhi alayhi. He is buried in Baghdad, in the blessed city of Baghdad. A lot of our scholars are buried in Baghdad, near Imam al-Kadhim. May Allah give you all a chance to do ziyara. And it's said that one person dug up the grave of Muhammad bin Yaqub al-Kulayni, and they saw that his body was completely intact. It did not uh, decompose. It was not eaten away. So that is a fadl and the karama of a Sheikh al-Qudaini. And just by the work of al-Kafi himself, right? Because you're never going to see anything like al-Kafi. Is there another Shia book like al-Kafi? Abadan. Right? So just this work alone lands him in the s plus tier easily. Uh, we have Firq al-Shia by Nawbakhti. Where does he land himself? The Hassan bin Musa Nawbakhti lands himself in the C tier. Okay, his book Firaq al-Shi'a, there is a difference of opinion on if the book is his or not. It basically goes into the different branches of Tashayyur, but it is not the greatest book. Okay, it is not the greatest book. It is, I have used it before. It is a nice book, but it's not the greatest. Not a lot is known about his life. All they know is like, he's thiqa, he had a few books, that's it. But it is said that he was a companion of a few of the Imams, such as Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Jawad. Wallahu la'ala wa la'ala. I'm going to have to go through him quickly, al-Afu. I will have to go through them quickly because not a lot is known about this man's life. Next is Abu Mikhnaf. Allah, where does Abu Mikhnaf land himself? Abu Mikhnaf, he is S plus easily. Abu Mikhnaf is clearly there. Abu Mikhnaf, Lut ibn Yahya al Azdi al Kufi, Rubanullah ta'ala alayhi, Sahib Maqtal al Hussein. Of course, the book Maqtal al Hussein is not an authentic version of his book, it is fabricated. But what we can say is that Abu Mikhnaf. He was the main scholar of Al-Kufa during his time, and he was a contemporary of Imam Al-Sadiq, along with his student, Hisham bin Muhammad ibn Sa'ib al-Kalbi. Abu Mikhnaf, he wrote a lot of history books. A Seerah of Rasulullah, Maghazi, Maqtal Amir al-Mu'mineen, Maqtal al-Hasan ibn Ali, Maqtal Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyya, Maqtal al-Husayn alayhi salam. Not Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyya, al-Afu. Maqtal Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Excuse me for that. And his main one is Maqtal al Hussein, which at Tabari he also narrates through his student Hisham. Abu Mikhnaf, it is said that he was like, the Sunni scholars hate this man. They hate this man. And that's enough for us to love him. If they hate a Shi'i scholar, that's enough for us to put him in the high S tier. They say, oh, Ura Fadiyah Muhtariq, he will burn in hell. Wal billah, Abu Mikhnaf, Rudwanullah ta'ala alayhi, he lent himself, of course, in the S tier. This man, inshallah, may Allah. Uh, put us with him. His absolute tatqiq in history and his, like, how, like, at the time, imagine no one wanted to write about, uh, like, the full story of Sayyid al-Shuhada and he was the first person who stood up and did it. 
He said, I will write about Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam. And he wrote the first Maqtal book. Let's go to a Shaheed al-Thani, S+. Plus. A Shaheed al-Thani, Allah ta'ala alayhi, is of course the second martyr of the, the, the five, the second martyr of the five, right? He is absolutely based. It is said that the martyred qawaid of our ilm al-rajal was made by him. Allahu maqamuhu sharif a shayid al-Thani, he was killed because he was a Shi'i, right? They accused him of heresy, and they killed him. They cut his head off, they paraded his body and head through the streets, and they then burned his body and threw it into the ocean. That's what they did to him, right? But he is a fakhr of the Shia, right? And of course, the Shamis, those from Syria, they can do iftikhar with him. Also, the Lubnanis as well, right? A shayid al-Thani, he was around, I believe, in the 10th century. And of course, they killed him for his books on Tashayyah and his Sharh on the Lum'an Dimashqiyya, the book of a Shahid al Awal, which we will get into in a bit. Yeah, like this is what happens to those that love Ahlul Bayt. But his importance and his ethel and his effect on the Shia lends himself in the S plus tier. All right, next we have Tafsir, uh, Sahib Tafsir al Safi, which is Al Faydh al Kashani. He lands himself, he lands himself in the, oh, in the A tier easily. <laughs> Al-Safi is a very large tafsir book. Along with his other books, uh, he compiles like a bunch of hadith, right? He was probably the inspiration for the book Bihar al-Anwar, and he was one of the main Akhbari scholars. Al-Fayd al-Kashani, rahimahullah, uh, he was a very important scholar, especially when it came to tafsir al-Quran. And a lot of the tafsir al-Ma'nawi that we have today comes from Al-Fayd al-Kashani. Right? He holds a great importance. right? And he was a... I believe a contemporary of Al Alam Al Majlisi, Allah Taala, but that is where Al Fadl Al Kashani lands himself. Now we have a Shahid Al Awal. A Shahid Al Awal is S tier, low S tier. I believe a Shahid Al Thani was at a greater rank, but a Shahid Al Awal, Rahimahullah Taala, uh, the the first of the five martyrs, he was killed for writing his book Al Lumad Dimashqiyya, which is a book on Rafidi jurisprudence, Rafidi fiqh. Okay, they killed him for it. They took his body, they cut his head off, and they burned it, just like how they did a Shahid al Awal. And they paraded his head through the streets, and Allah knows what they did with him. Right? What they did with his head. But they burned his body. A Shahid al Awal, of course, uh, again, his most important book is Al Lum'ad Dimashqiyya. And it was actually a book of its kind, right? No one had seen a book of fiqh exactly like this one. It was like Al Muqni'a by Shaykh al Mufid during his time. Right? It needed someone to write a sharh for it. Someone needed to explain it. And so, a shayid al-thani, he came along and explained in muqni'a, just as a shaykh al-tusi, which we will get to, uh, came along and explained uh, kitab uh, al-muqni'a by a shaykh al-mufid. Next, we have a sharif al-murtaba. Easy S tier. He was the master of the hawza before a shaykh al-tusi. He was the one who buried a shaykh al-mufid. And he was the better of his two brothers, right? A Sharif al radi I believe that a Sharif al radi would have been more magnificent, more paid attention to, if he lived for a longer time. But a Sharif al radi though he was the younger brother of a Sharif al murtaba believe it or not, he died 35 years before him. 35 years. That is, you know, a little shocking. And one of my great wonders about the Shi'i scholars, like, when did he die? When did he pass away? Now we move on to... Actually, now let me go ahead. Let me let me give Sheikh Sharif al his haq. Okay, a Sharif al murtaba I believe his most prolific work, the best of his works, are Kitab al Shafi fil Imama, al Shafi fil Imama, and Tanzihul al Anbiya. Okay, al Shafi fil Imama is a book refuting the Sunni Abdul Jabbar al Mu'tazidi. Uh, Abdul Jabbar al Mu'tazidi he wrote a book called Al Mughni fil Imama. He wrote a book called Al Mughni. Al Mughni is 20 volumes, and he dedicated a book called, uh, he dedicated a, a volume of Al Mughni about Imam. So he thought that the, some people, even the other Sunni scholars that don't like the Mu'tazila, they were like, oh my God, you know, Shia refuted. Abdul Jabbar al Mu'tazili has done it, man. You know, we don't like the Mu'tazili, but he's just refuted Imam. And so Sharif al Murtaba, he comes out and he writes a four volume book about Imam and refuting Abdul Jabbar al Mu'tazili called Shafi. And he's like, what, you guys, you guys, like, because he's like, I saw a lot of people, right, in the Muqaddimah, he says, I saw a lot of people 
quoting the book of Abdul Jabbar al Mu'tazili. These guys really think they're something. They think they're important. They think they've done something. So he writes a four volume book, literally like ripping the arguments of Abdul Jabbar al Mu'tazili apart. Let's go to. Let's go and move on to Basar al Darajat, Sahib Basar al Darajat, which is Al Safar. Al Safar al Qummi, Muhammad al Hassan Safar al Qummi. He lands himself in the S tier. This book is one of one of the greatest, if not the greatest book I have ever seen been written on Fadail al Muhammad. This book he wrote, Great Virtues of Ahlul Bayt. Right? The book, the asad of the book was like, uh, like I believe 10 volumes, but each volume was very small, so they put it all into one mujallad. And it's a very important book about Fadail al Muhammad to the point where all the contemporary scholars that write about Ahlul Bayt guaranteed you're going to see them uh, narrating from this book easily. Uh, now let's go ahead and go to Manaqib Al Abi Talib, Sahib Manaqib Al Abi Talib by Ibn Shahar Ashub. Uh, he's gonna land himself. Some might even disagree with this. He's in the D tier. The way he compiled his book was like it was so. It looked like, with no disrespect to him, because he's an amazing scholar, right? He's all of our scholars are good. May Allah bless them all with mercy. Uh, but the way he wrote his book was like more like. Imagine like a teenager trying to rush a paper about about Ahlul Bayt. This is what he did, right? He made it very long, right? He did indeed make it very long, but the sources he used are either sometimes unknown or non-Mu'tabar. And one of his mistakes is that he, I believe some people even say that he claimed that his belie- that he believed that his, his whole book was Mu'tabar, which is an obvious mistake. But the book is, of course, four volumes. Uh, it is not a bad book, but if you want a book about the lives of Ahlul Bayt and Manaqib Ahlul Bayt, I suggest looking at something like an Urshad or Alam al Wara by Tabrasi. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Al Mas'udi. One of our great historians, Al Mas'udi will land himself in the S tier. This man was one hell of a historian. His history book is amazing. For anyone who's read some of it, the Meadows of Gold and the Minerals of Silver. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, the Minerals of Gems, I believe is what it's called. Uh, it's a five-volume book of history. And in my opinion, it's better than Tabari. Now, and Mas'udi also had another book proving Imama called Ithbat al-Wasiyah fi wilayati Amir al-Mu'mineen wal a'imma. Ithbat al Wasli is a book about the lives of the 12 Imams and proving their Imamah. And it, and it, it is tasrih, clear tasrih that Al Mas'udi was indeed a Shia. He was a 12er Shia. Okay? And even the Sunni scholars, they try to do Armaav to Shia, but they still take from him. Like, oh, you know, Mas'udi is da'if, and, you know, Mas'udi is a Rafadi Shia. By the way, I'm quoting Mas'udi in this one book. You know, that's, that's their attitude. Let's go to Al Majlisi. Where does Al Majlisi land himself? And Majesty is a clear uh, S plus tier, easily. Like without a doubt, and Majesty is a clear S plus tier. His Bihar alone is enough to take him to this, to this level right here, right? Imagine you sit down for how many years, and this man, you know, and Majesty Rabbanullah Taala Ali. They, they. Some people say that they added to the book after his death, but that's there's no problem in that. Uh, but Al Majisi Rubanullah Ta'ala Ali, uh, along with his Bihar, right? It is said that his sisters also helped him write his Bihar. So may Allah bless them. And his and he also had slaves that helped him write it. But at first he had to write it by hand, by himself, and then he had other people copy the book down. He was like, I want to put every hadith of the Shia in a specific chapter. So here you go. Here's Bihar, right? And Al Alam al uh Al Hur al Amani, Adasallahira. He says that's like he's the Mawla. He's it is said that he's also a descendant. He's a descendant of Abu Nuaim al Asqalani, believe it. One of the Shia, the Sunni scholars, Abu Nuaim, very famous scholar. I believe he's Sahib al Tafsir. Uh, he has a book. Uh, he was a descendant of him, right? And al Asqalani was mainly Sunni. But this man, he made a movement to not only refute the Sunnis and to spread the Shia through all of Persia. He also made a movement to go against the Sufis, believe it or not. He tried really hard to like, guys, like, 
you guys just changed to Sawwuf to just like call it Arfan, and there you go. Like it's not there's it's not different. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Abdullah bin Jafar al Himyari, Sahib Qurb al Isnad. He is an A tier. Qurb al Isnad is a book where he's just like, I have these specific chains to the Imams. Here's some hadith from them in different topics. That's it. So he had a son named Muhammad uh, ibn Abdullah ibn Jafar al Himyari. It is said that he added to the book, but Allah al A'la al A'lam, that is debatable. From my bahith, I haven't seen that he had really added to the book. Uh, but Abdullah ibn Jafar al Himyari. Uh, he holds very important hadith that, like, it's so early that no other books have this. It's as if the book was lost from a very, very uh, uh, early time, but it was recovered. Subhanallah, right? Some people say that it was actually bigger. It wasn't complete. Allahu al-a'la al-a'lam. Next, we have Ibn al-Ghazairi. Sahib al-Rijal. Uh, I, be- I personally believe, I'm not trying to debate this with anyone, I personally believe that the book is his. Uh, but he lands himself under Najashi. Uh, actually, he lands himself one place above Najashi. Because, of course, he was the teacher of Najashi. Uh, Najashi took from him a lot from Abu Afa. Uh, like, the man was very, very uh, knowledgeable when it came to Ilm al-Rijal. He, he specialized better than in Najashi and Ilm al-Rijal. And uh, he, were, he was in more fields. So, in al he lands himself in the A tier. He was... Ibn al-Ghadari, he died in the 5th century, around that time. So around like the early 5th century, like 400 years after the Hijra. Next, we have Al-Muhadith al-Nuri. I know a lot of people have been waiting for Al-Muhadith al-Nuri. Muhadith al-Nuri is an S-tier. I want to tie him with Al-Hur al-Amli, but I can't. But he's tied with Al-Hur al-Amli, in my opinion. Al-Muhadith al-Nuri, Rabban Allah Ta'ala alayh, his... His effort with the Shia, his effect on the Shia was just as the effect that Al Hur al Amli had. Okay? His Mustadrak al Wasail was truly the completion of Al Hur al Amli's book. But he also went into other fields. The only thing that I can criticize him for is his book, Fasl al Khitab, where he tries to prove Tahrif to the max, like a belief in Tahrif that none of our other scholars have. He tries to prove it to the max, and he wrote it, right? And subhanAllah, Fasl al Khitab is still here today. Al-Hur al-Amili, his companion, Al-Muhadith al-Nuri, that's what I like to call him. He was, he was indeed, he was truly an amazing scholar. And his work was just like the work of Wasad al-Shia, right? He put as much hard work into it, and he wrote other things about it. I, bet, I might change it, but for now, Al-Muhadith al-Nuri, Mirza, I will go ahead and put him over here. I might take him down. Actually, to think about it, like seeing those that come before him, I might... He is still an amazing scholar, right? He did hard work. But I'm going to have to drop him to the B tier. <laughs> He's in the B tier. All right, now we have Ibrahim bin Ali al-Kaf'ami. Ibrahim bin Ali al-Kaf'ami, ala Allah maqamuhu sharif I'm going to have to put him in the D tier. All we have is books of dua from him. That's it, just books of dua. All right. Uh, the, his books are good, but the, we just don't know where he gets a lot of his dua from. He has muhajjud da'wat. Not muhajjud da'wat, al He has al-masbah. He also has Kitab Al Al Balad Al Amin, but they're all books of Dua. We just don't know what he specialized in. Just Dua is that really it? Like just Amal? Like that's that's praiseable, yes. But like his yes. But come on, like we wish we had more from him. Common Ziyarat S tier. Uh, Sahib Common Ziyarat easily in the S tier. One hundred percent. Like no question about it. His book is one of a kind. Like I've never seen. A book this early and just like that, like Kamil Ziyarat. And he was the, the teacher of Ibn Q- uh, he was the teacher of uh Sheikh Al Mufid, Allah Maqamu Sharif. And of course, uh Sheikh Al Mufid he wanted to be buried next to him. He says, Bury me next to my teacher. So may Allah bless him, may Allah bless Sheikh Al Mufid, may Allah bless the people that they are buried next to. Next we have a Sheikh Al Tusi. I want to put him above Kulaini, or should I keep him tied with the Saduq? I'll put him better than Kulaini, but under Saduq. But just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right? But a Sheikh Al-Tusi, believe it or not, he was also born a Sunni. Just like Al-Ayashi, who we went over. He was also born, he was also born a Sunni. He was born a Shafi'i Sunni. And when he met Sheikh Al-Mufid, he converted him. So one of the, another reason why Sheikh Al-Mufid is the best scholar is because Sheikh Al-Tusi is one of the greatest scholars. He was the one who made him a Shi'i. And he was the one who guided him to the haq. Sheikh Tusi, ala Allah maqamahu sharif 
his book Tahdib al Ahkam and his other book Al Istibsar. They were both books trying to explain Kitab al Muqni'ah. And they are two of our main fiqh books. Truly, uh, Sheikh al Pusi, he has, he, he, you know, we owe a lot to him. He is buried not far from Amir al Mu'mineen, salamullah alayhi. He has his old little, like, masjid, his old little jami' uh, in the Najaf al Ashraf. Uh, and he is buried there. Inshallah, may Allah give you all the chance to visit a Shaykh al Pusi. So, we're almost done. We have only four more left. Uh, then we'll do a recap. Uh, we have a Tabrasi Sahib Bajma al Bayan. He will land himself in the A tier. Uh, again, Atusi Brother Musa, he is in uh, the S plus tier, right behind the Sheikh Sadiq and the Sheikh Al Mufid. Now, a uh, Sheikh Al Tabrasi, right? Let me tell you a story about him. So, this tafsir is very important. But Al Tabrasi, Allah Maqam Sharif, one time they thought he died. Right? They thought he died and they buried him alive. <laughs> Believe it or not, like God help him, like he went through all that, and so he's literally in the grave, like he's being squeezed, like bro, I need to get out of this, and so he's like, Ya Allah, get me out of the, uh, get me out of this right now, and I will write a tafsir book of the Quran, and so a person who is trying to steal treasures that they might have buried with a tabrasi, Subhanallah, he digs his grave up, and he finds that he's still alive, and he's like, Oh my God. The man is still alive, and he's like, "What the hell are you doing, trying to you know steal from the graves and stuff like that?" And so, indeed, he wrote a tafsir book, Majma al Bayan. It is a wonderful tafsir book for those who want to read it. It's a very good tafsir book, and he was, of course, a a fifth century scholar. And I believe he's the father or the son of the man that wrote the book Makarim al Akhlaq, which is a very important book of Akhlaq. Next up, we have Al Ghayba by Al Uh He easily uh, he's going to go ahead and rank himself in. He's going to rank himself behind Al uh, Safar. Sahib Kitab Al Basar al Darajat. So, his most important book and his only book that got to us, a book on Sahib al Zaman, Salamullah Ali. The scholars they describe, and it's narrated in Najashi, it says this book was so special, right? The way he wrote it, it was so special and important. They they made sure that this book would never be lost. They said, "Oh yeah, you know we don't care about some books, but Al Ghayba by Muhammad bin Abi Zainab bin Nu'mani. This is a book that is important. You will keep it with you, no matter what." And Al Nu'mani, not a lot alone is known about his life, but he's a contemporary of a Sheikh Al Kudaini, and he used to narrate from Al Kudaini. He also narrated Kitab Al Kafi to us, along with the students of Al Kudaini, which is Sahib Kabil Al Ziyarat Ibn Qalawi. Allahu Maqamuhu Ma Sharif. Next, we have a Sayyid ibn Ta'us. For a lot of the sourceless things that a Sayyid ibn Ta'us narrates, he's going to be in the C tier. Okay, so he was, uh, some people say that he was the master of the Hilly scholars during his time. This is debatable. Uh, I believe not Khawaja Nasruddin al Tusi, Allah Maqamuhu Sharif, which sadly I forgot to put him on here, but he, uh, in my opinion, he ranks S. Uh, this, this, uh, of course, uh, uh, a Sayyid ibn Ta'us, he's a blessed scholar, but. Uh, 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 he he quotes a lot of sourceless things, but I, in my opinion, his most important books are his book called Al Yaqeen fi Ithbat Yaktisas Maulana Aliyan bi Amir Al Mu'minin, which he quotes over two hundred narrations, stating that Amir Al Mu'minin, Salamullah Alayhi, is Amir Al Mu'minin. Right, this is a name that Rasulullah gave him, and his book Al Malhuf Ala Qatl Al Tufur. Last but not least, we have Al Yaqubi, and then uh, I'll give the word to Brother Lucarios. We'll We'll let him conclude, inshallah. Al Yaqubi, he lands himself like there's a khtilaf on this man was even a Shia, and his history book isn't the greatest. He's going to land himself in the D tier. Like, literally, not even a, a lot is known about his life. He worked with the Abbasids for a little bit, uh, but he is respectable. I respect him, and I ask Allah to forgive him. With this, this is the Shi'i scholar tier list. We have, we'll go from a best to the worst of the best. We have a Sheikh Al Mufid, a Sheikh Al Kuleni, a Dal Kuleni Lafu, a Sheikh Al Mufid, a Sheikh Al Saduk, a Sheikh Al Tusi, a Sheikh Al Kuleni, a Sayyid Al Murtaba, Al Alab Al Hilli, a Sayyid Al Khui, Al Alab Al Majesty, Abu Mikhlef, a Sheikh Al Thani, Ibn Qawlaway, Ali bin Ibrahim, a Safar, Mohammed Al Hassan Safar, a Mohammed bin Abi Zaynab Al Nurbani, Al Hur Al Abidi, Al Masoudi, a Sheikh Al Awal. 
عبد الله بن جعفر الحميري الفيض الك... العفو الفيض الكاشاني آه الطبرسي صاحب مجموع البيان آه الشريف الرضي ابن الغضائري النجاشي قاضي نور الله السيد قاضي نور الله آه الخرا... صاحب الخرائج آه وجه القطب الدين الغاوندي احمد بن علي بن ابي طالب الطبرسي الكشي العياشي المحدث النوري السيد بن طاووس الحسن بن موسى النوبختي مصباح صاحب الكفعمي العفو ابراهيم بن علي الكفعمي محمد بن علي بن شهر اشو بن مازن دراني اند يعقوبي So that is the Shi'i scholar tier list uh i've this was very very fun i hope it was informational i hope you guys saw it as fun and informational as well i hope you learned something good hopefully you agree uh and of course before i give the uh the report to brother lucarios if he's still here uh are there any scholars that you wish to see on here and i will tell you where they rank in my opinion i will give it just a minute inshallah i'll see if anyone has like a scholar to think of they wanted to see on here All right, uh, for now, uh, Brother Lucarios, if you're still here. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah, brother, thank you so much. Like, a lot of the credit, guys, like, come on, this is not just my event. This is Lucarios' event as well, bro. A lot of the credit goes to him. He he would stay up at night, like, late at night, just to help me, like, you know, set this tier list up, make sure I got all the good scholars. Uh, he sent the list to me. Like, may Allah bless you, Brother Lucarios, and your family. May Allah bless you all, inshallah. I had... A lot of fun with this. A lot of fun. Uh, and not, not only fun, it was also informational. To, صراحة, this, this list made me work, right? I had to, I had to work uh, like to, you know, even learn about some of these scholars, right? I know their name. I know that I said Taradli on them sometimes. But I'm like, what impact did they have on the Shia? So this is their impact on the Shia. Uh, you know, uh, and of course, like, thank you all so much for listening. May Allah bless you all immensely. Inshallah Ta'ala. Uh, and I inshallah I hope to see you guys in the, the next event that we do. Wahsallallah ilaykum wa jazakumullah al fukhair wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadan wa ala Ali Baytihi Tayyibina Tahirin.